This is the Chrissy Swan Show. Let's go clicking. Chrissy's clickbait. So much to discuss already. SMTD. So Rob Schneider, you would know him from The Animal and Juice Bigelow from the 90s, I guess, 80s and 90s. He had a daughter called L King. Still, she is still his daughter. And you will know her from this song. I had no oh, idea. Didn't you? No. She's so great. I follow her on Instagram. She's done. She's been in Nova's Red Room. Has she? Yeah. Wow. Now, she's a really cool girl, and I love watching her on Instagram. And because she's cool, I assumed her dad was also cool, Rob Schneider. And, Swanee, I remember as a kid watching Juice Bigelow like when I shouldn't have been, and I would have picked him to be a nice dude even off camera. Like, he gives across this aura. Even earlier this week, we watched a little snippet of him. He was the um, 50... person that married uh, Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler in 50 Yes. Day. Anyway, that they've had a very weird and they call it toxic uh, relationship. And Elle King has uh, sat down uh, for a podcast and she's of the age now. She's got a kid of her own. She's not hiding any secrets. I was like a really, really heavy child. My dad sent me to fat camp. And then I got in trouble one year because I sprained my ankle and I didn't lose any weight. Oh. Very toxic and very silly. I had already <laughs> started getting tattooed and it was like 108 degrees. So I was having to wear sweaters because my dad was like very anti-tattoos or like any form of self-expression that differed from what he wanted. Ooh. That's a sh- what, that's a, what an asshole. I know. Well, I'll, I will talk about my thoughts on this okay. in a second, but Rob Schneider has then sat down for a podcast of his own and wanted to come. I want to just tell my daughter, Elle, I love you, and um, I I wish I was the, the father in my 20s that, uh, that you needed. I feel terrible, and I, I just want you to you know that I don't take anything you say personally. <laughs> what? <laughs> he was doing so well until that last one. But here's the thing. The, the, the body stuff is hard because that was the 90s and every parent did that to every child. Because is that just how they were brought up? That's just what happened. I mean, I was in like public weighing clubs from the age of 10. That is so traumatic. I know. See, but I don't blame anyone for that because they, they weren't doing it to be mean. They just thought that's what they that did. That was what you did. That was what you did. And you, you know counted what? your bread exchanges and you weighed your poached chicken at wow. 10. All of that. But that's just what happened. And I guess him being in the like industry and being in Hollywood, he would have been around it even furthermore. Of course, of course. So, yes, it is diabolically wrong and sets up so many bad relationships with food and yourself and your self-esteem and all of that. But I don't think it's the parents' fault. I think I don't. Ma- I think it's society's problem. I, I think maybe now, though, Elle and Rob maybe need to go have a coffee or a Oh, no, burger I think that's over. Out. I think that's over. But I really? Think, yeah. Why are they still talking about it to everyone? Well, I just... I think they're very different people, and that's okay, too. All right, a lollipop man has been banned from giving high fives to the kids that he, you know, allows to cross the road, and I am devastated for him. That is so sad. It is... I'm sorry, but the, the lollipop man is like the highlight of the day. It's It sets your day up. I remember as a kid uh, high-fiving Jeff every morning. Jeff. And it was just like, the. it's just you knew your day had started. And he'd give you a smile and a high-five. There like, was one parent who complained. Oh. Who? Why? And how could you live with yourself to make that call? Whenever I hear things like that, I think, I wonder what that call sounded like. Like, oh, hi, hi, Mr. Highgrove, the principal. I just want to talk to you about the high, the, the high-fiving on the... I mean, who would... I just can't imagine. But not only that, Swanny, but who would listen to just one parent? I that agree. school principal should have said, listen, Karen, pull your kid out of the school. Yes. And find a school without a crossing. Yes. And a little pedestrian man. Yes. Bye, Karen. And then... <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. Let's go click in. Chrissy's clickbait. I mean, sue me, but I love Robbie Williams, all right? Yeah, okay, I get I'm, it. I'm I tested get it. positive for Robbie. Um, oh, man. Have you seen this man live? I perform? have. I saw him, was it last year or the year before when he was in Melbourne? Yeah. But remember, I found him a little, it was like a pantomime. 
everything was like poor Robbie, and then he was doing yeah. all these annoying actions, and I, I was think, kind of like, oh. I think we left it too late to see him because I hadn't seen him either, and I saw him recently when he was filming the opening scene to his bio. Yes, sort of, I saw that one as well. I've seen him twice. He sort of went. That sort of went nowhere. I Nobody know. want to watch it. No. Anyway, he is. Uh, I love him, and make sure that you have. Kids ready with our girl Kylie because it is a great song. What a song! Is it your favourite? My favourite, and because my sister and I used to do the Corey to this oh when I was a God. kid. I know, and give mum and dad a, like do a concert to this song. Oh, how cute! I know, so I love this song. Oh my God, I would give anything. I know to you see would. It. And just seeing David going. Wendy, do you think you might be? Anyway, <laughs> um, so <laughs> Robbie is feeling very grateful after renewing his wedding vows with Ada Field, his wife. Gross. Now, I am talking about this specifically because I want to hear your sassy take on renewing a vow. You've already had the wedding. You've got married. You don't need to renew vows, guys. I am still for it, and I know it surprises you. I think it's lovely. I think it almost means more than the wedding, than the original wedding. But my thing is, Swanee, you can just sort of realign and discuss your values as the relationship goes on. You could do that on the couch on a Tuesday night. Yeah, but you could do that for an initial wedding too. <sighs> nah, but you got to have... I'm going to party. got to throw a party for your mates. That's true. And look, they don't... Do they do renewal vow parties? No. No, no. So I think, oh, no, you know what they do? Insufferable Instagram posts. Oh, saying yeah. I've renewed my well, vows in exactly Bali. This is exactly what this is. Um, a, a line that I wanted to share with you from yeah. the article was how he's, he goes, I've got a new smile and a new pink jacket and stuff. And by the new smile, he means that he's got a brand new set of veneers. Now, um, this is the line that I wanted to run past you. It says, he's replaced his teeth after three decades of wear and tear, which I get it. In addition to years of not brushing his teeth. Sorry? Yeah. Wait, he, he's admitted so it this. Says, yeah, he says, you know, he's, he's used them as a bottle opener. He's had too much coffee, oh. coke abuse. Years of not brushing his teeth. That is just so gross. I mean, please explain. How has his wife been with him? Well, when she, that they went on to talk about their first date. And on a very first date, he had one shoe on and was clucking like a chicken. And she's like, well, Cook at least I've, seen him, I've seen him when he's off the wagon. It can't get worse than this. Also, when he was in the early single days of his career, he would hook up with a lot of his fans. Mm. You'd think that like a fan would have gone and given that story to Woman's Day or something. Yeah. I mean, like, oi, Pash Robbie on the weekend, stinking breath. Like cheese in there. Ooh. Yuck. All right, let's move on to this very dark story. Basically, it's beware of what you tick on the boxes when you sign up for a free month's trial subscription. I've done that so many times I don't with think everything. I've ever read the T's and C's one. Never read it. Ticket and move on. Choose an avatar. Correct. You know, that's the exciting Absolutely. part. But a, a, a poor woman passed away um, at Disney World because she was deeply anaphylactic to allergic to nuts. Ooh. And, um, and she had a nut and passed away. Very, very sad. And her husband was trying to sue for a wrongful death because they checked and checked, you know, are, are there any allergens in here? They've been told no. Anyway, there was, and they've tried to sue for, you know, compensation. Yeah. And they've been told that you ticked a box in 2019 when you signed up for a one-month free trial on Disney+. Plus. And in those terms and conditions is a clause that says you can't press charges. Now, I know this is really sick and twisted, Swanee, but I kind of, like, am impressed that Disney have this level of, like, legality and BS in their T's and C's to think of I this. know. It's like I imagine opening up the main office at yeah. Disney World and, like, Ursula is there going, <laughs> <laughs> This is why we did this! Yeah. That poor bloke must be like, wait, what? I mean, it seems out of character, I'll be honest. Anyway. Hopefully they, they can work it out. Hey, we are done. Ricky Lee, Tim and Joel are up next. It's Quick Draw Day. We're back tomorrow, Swanee, for the last day of Chrissy's Dumpling Discovery. I don't think I can go rogue again and say, let's do this for another week. No, no, no. Let's so not. So tomorrow, someone is going to win. And I am going to have chili wontons. Yum! So everyone wins. <laughs> <laughs> now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.